All right, this time on Mealtown Speed, we repower this 69 El Camino with an engine that's bound to hurt some feelings. And this guy right here helps us make more power than we probably should, and we're probably going to break parts on the dyno. Oh, All right, so here's the skinny guys. We're gonna do something that I have never seen anybody do before. Keith, have you ever seen what we're gonna do? There's a, there's one 67 Nova that there was a LTG that they tried to swap in, but I uh, haven't heard whatever happened to it, so. And, and Keith's using uh, nerdy Ecotech language here, but basically, what are we doing? What, 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 what's, this, what's the skinny? Well, instead of putting an LS motor in like everybody else would do, we're gonna we're gonna do half of that. We're gonna put a four-cylinder Ecotec motor. What? So we're gonna try to make a little bit more power per liter than uh, than normal. But we're gonna shoot for eventually 600 horsepower, but first first goal will be 400 with the turbo. So multiple phases. Phase one, 400 horsepower. We're gonna do. What did you say? We're gonna, so it's stock, e uh, stock internal, stock, completely stock out of a junkyard, two hundred dollar Saab nine three turbo motor, which is an Ecotec. So it's an Ecotec out of a Saab. The transmission is out of a Colorado. The transmission that we're going to use is out of a, a modern two thousand five Chevy Colorado. The bell housing to mate that transmission to the Ecotec has to have an Ecotec bolt pattern, and to get rear-wheel drive Ecotec bolt pattern, we had to use a Solstice transmission bell housing. So Solstice bell housing, but it's the, the, the Ecotec out of the Saab isn't necessarily anything special that would prevent other folks from doing this with like something out of a Cobalt, right? Yeah, so it, Cobalt SS's, uh, and it doesn't even have to, if you guys wanted to start with Without a turbo, you can buy an Ecotec in anything ranging from a Cavalier to an HHR to a Pontiac G5. It's one of the most common engines that they built. They come in 2 liter, 2.2 liter, 2.4 liter forms, some turbo, some supercharged. Um, there's obviously some differences in internals for the supercharged motors, but, uh, but they're all pretty solid platforms to start with. Excellent. And this is definitely going to be a sort of a departure for us because we're, we're LS guys, really. I mean, that's kind of our goal is to put an LS in anything just because it's cheap and easy. All right, commence phase one. All right, so what we have here is a Saab 9.3 motor. Uh, the Saab 9.3 motor is an Ecotec motor, uh, same thing that would have been in the Cobalt SS. The difference is that it already has a turbo versus a supercharger. And uh, there's some other small differences and they run their own ECU setup. Uh, so we're gonna swap over to the LSJ Ecotech wire harness and uh, computer so that we can run HP tuners. And then uh, eventually upgrade the turbo so that we can get the power level we want. But uh, this will be minimal work rather than having to swap over from the supercharger, hopefully go through this engine into rear wheel drive. Uh, our only options were either a Solstice or Sky transmission. Um, and this is a Pontiac Solstice transmission. I think it's the AR51. This uh, bell housing will bolt up directly to the Ecotech. Uh, the problem with this transmission is the output shaft. Here is a CV torque tube type 
uh, which would be a little bit extra work when it comes to getting it in the El Camino. So over here we have a 2005, I believe it was, should be Colorado, which uses the same section AR-51, I think it is, and uh, the difference is the slip yoke, which is more traditional. Colorado bell housing, not the same as the solstice. You'll notice the uh, starter in a different location. So, and all the bolt patterns are slightly off. So this is the first time we've had this up on a lift since Keith got it. Do you know any history on this one, Keith? No, basically no, no history. Looks like we got a super clean down here. Bent uh, control arm there. Something we'll have to fix before we want to strap it on the dyno for sure. This is why the car is so bouncy. The shocks aren't hooked up. Looks like they've been cut off for some reason. And the great thing about this is that anytime you use the impact gun on this, it's it's making it lighter. So we're actually gaining performance here. Whole location is actually better than I thought. Yeah. Might even be able to leave the shifter stop.
don't know what we're breathing right now, but it's... We removed the power steering pump off of the back. It's driven off of intake cam. This is the intake side. And off the exhaust cam, there was some sort of a vacuum driven. Air. Now that we've got a lot more room back here, we're gonna look and see if we can squeeze the engine back a little bit more, get our drive shaft length shorter, which is safer. There it goes. All right, so got the car on the ground. This is the uh, room that we've got, pretty decent. Figure about two inches of clearance. I mean, we can get in there and unbolt the transmission with ease if we have to. Next step, we'll start fabbing up engine mount transmission. Location is pretty solid. This is the tightest area of clearance, so this is where the factory thermostat uh, is. EcoTech Wizard. It's able to score us a Cam position sensor, I am told, uh, for an LSJ motor. The uh, back of this motor on the side, I guess a vacuum pump, an air pump. But this, uh, when we swap over from the Saab harness, uh, Saab apparently doesn't use the cam sensor or pulls the cam sensor from somewhere else, but uh, our GM computer needs a cam sensor position and it reads off of the cam, off the back of the exhaust cam there. but it's it's cars not dinosaurs Let's do that again. This is the part in the episode where the build is almost done, but yet they have to go and do like blow off steam. Yeah. So they they burn way too much time and then they end up almost uh, missing the deadline. Last run through before power tour, show you guys what we did and what we'll be running at power tour. So this you'll recognize as the 
blue Pontiac G6 that came in and we pulled the fuel tank out. Stock fuel pump, stock nylon line, fuel line here, and then Pontiac G6 filler tube with some bending and some hose going to the factory location. Now coming out of the fuel pump, you have a big wire harness. And the only important wires are gray, which is your power wire. And yep, that's run through a wire nut. And then black ground to chassis. That powers your fuel pump. So we got that line running all the way up to the front. Now for fuel line, obviously we didn't want to use a rusty old El Camino fuel line. So we stole the EGR plus the factory fuel line for the Pontiac. And then we cut it down and unioned them together. So this was, you know, $10 worth of parts to make a 3 8 fuel line run from all the way from the back of the tank. And forward, union, bend. Obviously we just tweaked the bends a little bit here and there. And still have our nice flex fitting, factory fitting up there. I added air shocks. I think they were about $60, $70 off Rock Auto. Um, just so I'll be putting stuff in the bed. I don't want to be able to adjust the ride height. Those are the old fuel lines that we're not using anymore. This is just a stock new U-joint, but this is the factory 69 El Camino drive shaft, factory 69 El Camino transmission cross member. And then we're going into the Colorado slip yoke using the conversion U-joint. This is a Colorado transmission mount. It fits directly into the stock El Camino. And uh, if you do it right, you probably won't have to do this, but I built that motor mount first because uh, I was in a hurry. And I think I set my engine a little bit, maybe half an inch to the left. So what I ended up doing was slotting these just a little bit to get everything as best I could in line. But we're going through 2005, 200,000 mile junkyard, $100 transmission. Inside the transmission, we've got the Solstice throwout bearing, Solstice pilot bearing, go into Solstice clutch with Cobalt SS flywheel, Cobalt SS pressure plate. Um, we had to do a little bit of clearancing on the bell housing up there. Just grind down one of the, near the bolts where the oil cooler bolts on. When you make the motor mounts, I put bolts underneath the motor to space it so that we've got ample room there. So we're not bouncing into some wires that we just tucked in there, but there's an air gap. This is a, the down pipe, just some pipe to a custom flange that we made. To reduce the weight, I ended up cutting these springs and I haven't gotten new shocks yet, but we don't need them for what we're doing. And I put a disc brake conversion kit on because this car had drums. So these were from Speedway, the whole disc brake kit. Um, and then the spindle kit was the cheapest by far that I could find even compared to us manually buying everything off Rock Auto. And it's a pretty good kit, comes with bearings and everything. And uh, goes together relatively easy. You might have to do a little bit of grinding if you want to run the 14 inch SS wheels like I wanted to. So I ended up having to lightly grind. You can see how tight it is in there. And it still makes a little rubbing noise on some of the old rust. So there's still some work to be done there, but it works. And we're not driving this one on the road just yet. I'll show you the motor mounts from underneath. They are plasma cutted, sloppy, functional mounts. Just plates to the bolt and then plates to the mounts. Same thing on both sides. So solid front motor mounts and you want to not have a solid mount back here because this thing is going to twist a little bit. And if this was solid, you'd be more likely to crack transmission. All right, so on the interior here, you'll notice the stock shifter from the Colorado being used. Uh, this is an extra 
piece of plate steel because when I was doing pulls on the dyno, I wasn't sure if my old drive shafts were going to hold up to the abuse. So eventually we'll get the sore f the floor sorted out and uh, probably add some armor plating for when we go to a thousand horsepower. We'll be able to hopefully keep our legs. You'll see the fuse block down there that powers everything. Obviously uh, temporary, but will eventually get put up underneath the dash. And then we have a boost gauge, mm, just for reference. Basically, it spikes all the way. This is the fun part. This is the Ecotech out of the Saab. So, completely stock. Saab motor, $275 delivered to me. You could get it cheaper in a junkyard or yourself. Um, and then we ran to a Cobalt SSK04 turbo instead of the Saab turbo, which is much smaller. This is the custom flange and downpipe that my friends cut with the plasma cutter and put some stock O2 for the computer and then a wideband O2 that we just welded the bungs in and that wideband feeds back into our HP tuners so while we tune we can make sure that we're safe. So here you just have a MAF sensor, open air, that's where it's drawing, pushing compressed air. This blow-off's not being used yet but that's going to be for future power level. We're just using stock blow off right now. Intercooler, plumbing the air through some sob soft tubing back into throttle body. Now throttle body for the sob has a different amount of pins. So that had to be rewired. The injector harness, we swapped to 80 pound eBay injectors, EV1 style. Uh, so they were 10 bucks a pop, really cheap, but we had to get a uh, harness for EV1. If you uh, don't want to make one yourself, you can buy them off. I think ZZP for like 25 bucks, pretty reasonable. Underneath here, we had a problem when we went to fire the engine. We were using the stock Saab coils with the Cobalt SS harness that we're using to get HP tuners to be able to run the motor. Uh, Turns out Saab coils are wired differently than Cobalt. So if you didn't know any better, like we didn't, for about six hours you'll be scratching your head until you go to bench test it and find out, uh, yep, they're wired differently. So we swapped Cobalt coils in using the Cobalt harness and it fired right up. Um, we did an AC delete which is what I do on my race car Ecotex. So all you have is short belt going to alternator, idler pulley, very simple. Oh, we also did a timing chain set because this thing was clicking, it had probably 150,000 plus miles. And that was about $55 shipped off of eBay within a couple of days. This is just a Cavalier radiator and we used a bunch of extra tubing to get it all plumbed up with turbo and everything. And then new factory disc brakes, El Camino, master cylinder, I think it was $100 off Rock Auto. And this is the Colorado Slave master cylinder here. And what it does is you turn it about 45 degrees to the right to Put it in and out and it's on a, a square hole basically so you put it in turn it and it locks and to get that to fit with our pedal that we stole out of the colorado we uh took the fuse block from the el camino out and used that spot um, made a little plate and welded it with the square hole so that would fit but the clutch actually came down to about here and we just cut it off brought the pedal up re-welded it so that it's in line and like I said we use almost the exact holes for the fuse block and then we're going to move the fuse block up under the dash there and so we've got pretty good spot there Colorado um, accelerated pedal because this is a drive-by wire so there's about four or five wires that you just have to wire into the ECU this pedal 
bottom mount hole to the factory pedal location. Two tops were just some screws that we shot. So everything lines up pretty nice. number one for tuning man number two for motor setup all because of him Phase one of the Ecomino build is complete, and right now Keith is dragging this pile across the country on Power Torque, making pulls on the Mule Town Mobile Dyno at every stop, challenging LS powered Elkos to put up or shut up against this 400 horsepower 2 liter Ecotech powered muscle car. Stay tuned for phase two of this build, which promises a bigger turbo, more boost, and probably catastrophic failure of some kind. See what breaks first on the next episode right here on Mule Town Speed. Pay no attention to that Audi. We don't we don't do Audi anymore. They're terrible. <laughs>